into the phallic game of institutions, so it's, it could be quite uh, subversive if we understand the system and if we understand the difference of the matrixial from systems, from the system. The matrixial border space in, is drawn and is further drawing virtual and real traumatic and phantasmatic as well as imaginary and symbolic transgressive contacts by inhabitation and erotic co-tuning in the same psychic field, or resonance field, or sensitivity field, sensibility field. So that you see that each participant by that participation inside this space not only become partial, but become partial because of this participation in the reattunements that is continual all the time. There's a lot about uh, to say about the matrixial affects, what kind of uh, affect would be matrixial. I think that uh, there's quite a number that we can na even name. And in a sense, surely compassion is one of them. Compassion is affect, not as an ethical decision. Not as my, my very, very last essay, or three essays, are uh, dedicated to the uh, idea that might be shocking for some or shocking to other systems, of what I call primary compassion. That is the, this sensitive apprehension of the other and of the world that does not go through this control, and this is very, very fragile, of course. It's not very strong as a tool for survival, and it's probably disappear. But I say that we must imagine uh, primary compassion, not that it is a result of a lot of work, but that it is a way of apprehending the object, the other and the mother and so on. What, what do we have as primary tools, in a sense? With Freud, and, and Kristeva follows on that, we have, you apprehend the other through hate. The encounter with the, as long as harmony is achieved, all is fine, and then suddenly the subject is not satisfied, somebody hurts him, I feel hate towards the mother or towards the feeding element. Or to, and then this is the first apprehension of the other, is through hate. With Kristeva, it becomes the object. That the first apprehension of the maternal is this movement of ik. And then I know that I am and she is different. So uh, we don't have this idea in psychoanalysis of primary compassion, but I do introduce it because I think this is only also a way of apprehending the other, extremely sensitive, very primary, and easily disappearing. So this is an example of a matrixial uh, affect. And I say again, it's not necessarily a big uh, pleasure or something like that. Uh, in, in one of the essays, I, I suggest that if we start to think the, that uh, through this shocking image of maybe maybe shocking, of Isaac. Can we imagine that Isaac have compassion to Abraham? I think we should imagine that. It doesn't mean that he wants to be a victim. It doesn't mean that, he agree, that we agree that we, we don't even pay attention to Abraham in this formulation. I just say that the, the, we have, the baby and the baby in us, has the capacity to apprehend the other through compassion, without empathy. Because empathy would mean I understand him, I know his motive, okay, he's my, mother, my father and he needs to do that to please God or whatever. No, nothing of the sort. Primary compassion is mean you don't have a source for that. No reason. You don't need to forgive, you don't need to forget, you don't need to excuse yourself. It's not at all negotiable. It only retroactively can enter a space of negotiation and of course it could be used and misused 
this primary uh, potential. Anyway, where have you been? I don't know where we are. Wait. So, okay. All kind of this affective, um, liminal apprehensions, vibrations, uh, that trembles in this kind of a virtual field, um, across imprinting, as I said, and create memory traces that are accumulated in several threads, and they transform each partial subject, not only into a partner of a larger subjectivity, but also into some kind of mental continuity of the psyche of another partial subject. We might not like it, uh, but um, it's not a matter of liking it or not. Or if we use this imaginary and if we understand this kind of fragile shareability, we can see how these um, subjective threads opens the possibility that on a certain level, in a certain dimension, for certain moments in the encounter, one psyche is the continuity of another. You get me on that? All of these are uh, both, uh, I think, important and useful if we are trying to think, again, art, and if we are trying to think how do we uh, participate in processes of transformation of one another. For example, in psychoanalysis, we need to think the matrixial transference. We need to think the dimension of the matrixial within the relation between patient and analyst and on what level they are equal on that, and in what level they are not equal in that. In the matrixial, for example, the, the uh, uh, sharing of, you don't, uh, the, the responsibility is not of all the elements on the same level. We should talk about responsibility of some partial subject uh, in the condition of caring for other partial subjects and so on, but maybe we enter that question later on. There is the, sub, the question of responsibility gets a new turn, but there is also what I call co-responsibility, which is much more uh, reciprocal. Co-responsibility is reciprocal, we are responding, we are co-responding, but responsibility is not on equal terms. Like, it would be ridiculous to think, for example, that the mother and the baby have the same responsibility toward the situation. Responsibility involves also the individual subject, the question of freedom and so on. It involves the meeting of the matrixial with the phallic sphere inside ourselves and all this negotiation how a subject attributes to itself the whole sphere and becomes responsible. Um, but core responsibility uh, is shared. Uh, so I said that on that level, at a certain moment, we can see the psyche as a continuity of the psyche of another in the matrixial border space. This allows, by the way, uh, if we realize that this uh, allows all kind of intervention in the analysis where the analyst can become conscious of the degree to which he can, she can provoke or incite or inspire uh, moments of transformation through her own self, her own awareness, not only waiting passively like we did maybe in Freud's time to imagine that the patient is going to produce theory of association and we are going to interpret that. 